That's he's why I said, to Johnny, right off the bat, is this true or not? I have a very tough time any of this is true. Here's why he says he's doing it, though. Listen to this. When the Post exposed the mayor's debit card program earlier this month, the mayor's office spun it as a money-saving program to solve this problem. Migrants staying in hotels don't eat all their food. DocGo, the city's no-bid emergency contractor to provide migrants with three meals a day, throws away up to 5,000 meals daily, wasting $7.2 million per year. So if you look at it that way, they're actually saving money by giving them $10,000 on a debit card. Isn't That's crazy, dude. So they created their own big government boondoggle. And to solve it, they're literally handing people money. That's, yeah. that's the mean, Democratic it, Party for you right there. Absolutely ridiculous. I wonder if I could go to a shelter and be like, hey, my name is fucking Howie Escobar. Look, I I haven't got my debit card yet. Howie Escobar. purposes only. You'd be an idiot to listen to anything these degenerates say. Invest at your own risk, do research, but seriously don't listen to these ass clowns. Now enjoy Cash Daddies. All right, welcome to Cash Daddies. We're in it to win it. Join me as always, uh, J-Dog, Juicy Johnny, Johnny Woodard, everybody, the J-Dog. And I'm and looking freshly cut. Oh, uh, look at that, bro. Somebody's ready for baseball season. How are we doing? It's a new game. What's going on? What's up? Looks like he just got cut by the seniors team. Is what yeah, it looks what happened, like. dude? You have some weird energy right now. Like you got a saggy <laughs> diaper that leaks. No, man. I got, got a little haircut. Got a hoop game tomorrow. I'm contemplating playing or not because it's, it's hurting a little bit. I don't know what's yeah, going dude, on. Don't be an idiot. Dude, you got to take off, man. You, you, you hurt something that stays hurt. Yeah, I gotta do. I'm I'm in rehab right now. I'm doing a bunch of these exercises. It's painful as shit. Stretching's painful, man. What 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 kind of rehab are you in? It's like you know, I'm doing like it's it's like seven to ten different stretches and exercises for this for this hip flexor. Um, it's like four or five hip stretches, and then you're doing like lunges, squats, trying to strengthen up the area around the. Probably deteriorated. Who knows? I mean, it's, it's it's from years of just running and jumping and shit. But what are you gonna do, man? You're getting old. But I'm not gonna. I still gotta play. I can still hit the three. Well, I'm like that. Maybe you should just do old black man basketball, where you just stand one shot and one spot and just shoot and hit it every time. You don't need to be driving to the basket like that's, it's ninety five. That's kind of what we do. We actually have a, a black point guard, and that's kind of what he does is makes moves and then gets me the ball for a 23-footer. Yeah, I don't I don't move like I used to, man. I, look, I mean, I can when I need to. Problem is, you know, you forget, man. You, you make a quick move, you go in, you score, and, and then a week and a half later, you're like, you can't move. And your girlfriend's yelling at you, making fun of you because, you know, walking around like an old man it sucks. Crazy. It's crazy. So, hey, how shitty is New York right now? New York's New York's good right now, man. I mean, we had a little snow Saturday, but right now it's good. What's going on with the immigrants, bro? Are they everywhere? Dude, I don't know, man. They say they are. <laughs> you, you got it. All right, here's the deal. I talked to my buddy on the phone. And you you got to go. You got to go up near. There's certain parts near Penn Station and then the other, the Roosevelt, Roosevelt Hotel. That's where they're staying at. So, I should go up and just see how many of them I can find. Yeah. Just start interviewing them. Like, Pablo, <laughs> fuck over here. What are you doing, man? Are you not everybody. Is that what you're telling them? Is that I what mean, you're they, definitely a few of them jumped on some cops because I saw it on TV down here. It happened like a half mile away from from me. But um, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. I, I don't see a lot of them. Why? Hey, listen, dude. I'm reading this right now. Breaking news. Mayor Adams plans to give illegals $10,000 each with no ID check required. You need to go down there and grab one. Do you think that's true? No. No way, right? They couldn't do that. Here's what I'm going to say about the new... And if you're reading it in the post, I'm starting to wonder. I'm going to tell you why. I woke up 
if you look on my Instagram, like a couple months ago, I made a post of me and my buddy. Um, this is a homeless dude. That uh, I've known this guy for a couple years, and he lives right around my corner. And he's he's out of his mind. He runs everywhere he goes. You know, he's the only guy in the world I where he's like, you got a couple bucks, and I'll give him two bucks, and he'll say thank you so much. So you have ten, and I'll say I just gave you two. He said, yeah, but I need ten. This he's a funny bastard. <laughs> So I wake up Saturday morning. He's on the front page of the New York Post. Front page, his face. And it says, knife-yielding vagrant uh, threatens woman. And right off the bat, I call, I texted my buddy who, who works at Warner Brothers. He lives down the street. And I said, look at this shit. And he said, this lady's lying, man. She, he doesn't. He's never carried a knife in his life. We know this guy. So she says, he pulled a knife. And this is on the front page of the Post. I mean, you can Google it. There's a huge article on it. And she says he pulled out a knife and threatened her, but she started coughing and told him that she had COVID. And oh, that, I saw that. And yeah. that's what deterred him. Let me, let me tell you something. I know this guy. I've known this guy for two years. He doesn't know what the fuck COVID is. He <laughs> has no idea what COVID is. I guarantee you, you, know, you can give him a lie detector and he has no... This lady fucking called the post, took a picture of him, and this picture was on the front of the post. And I'm That's like, funny. I, I'm like, this lady lied and made up the whole fucking story. And the post just ran with it. Like, oh, yeah, this guy came up, had a knife, threatened her. But she was really smart. She was thinking. So she coughed on him and said, I have COVID. You better be careful. And he turned around and ran away. I mean, so, and the, the, the speaking of the post. Uh, they've been reporting on the story that Mayor Eric Adams is giving out prepaid cash cards to migrants. Uh, this debit card program, if you read the actual contract, has the potential to become an open-ended, multi-billion dollar Bermuda Triangle of disappearing untraceable cash used for any purpose. It will give migrants up to $10,000 in taxpayer money with no ID check, no restrictions, and no fraud control. So it sounds like the old money laundering thing you're always talking about, Sam. I bet this doesn't even get to migrants. A few of them might get handled, oh, you know, just so they can dude, wave the them whole, around. Dude, the Democrats can't get anyone to donate to them. They just can't. They, nobody's donating to the Democrats. And they have to, dude, the Ukraine is just a giant money laundering scheme. Uh, this whole this whole thing is just like, yeah, it's all money laundering. I mean, what's happening in California is insanity right now. It's insanity. Can I just, sorry, this is crazy. This is why he said he's doing well, this. That's he's why I said to Johnny right off the bat, is this true or not? I have a very tough time any of this is true. Here's why he says he's doing it, though. Listen to this. When the Post exposed the mayor's debit card program earlier this month, the mayor's office spun it as a money-saving program to <laughs> solve this problem. Migrants staying in hotels don't eat all their food. DocGo, the city's no-bid emergency contractor to provide migrants with three meals a day, throws away up to 5,000 meals daily, wasting $7.2 million per year. So if you look at it that way, they're actually saving money by giving them $10,000 on a debit card. Isn't that's crazy, dude? So they created their own big government boondoggle, and to solve it, they're literally handing people money. That's yeah. that's I, the I Democratic mean, it, Party for you, right there. Absolutely ridiculous. It's I wonder if I could go to a shelter and be like, "Hey, my name is fucking Howie Escobar. Look, I I haven't got my debit card yet, man. Howie Escobar. <laughs> what if I could do that? Just do Howie you Escobar. Should you know? try to combine Mexican with Chinese accent, just so you say it's a new country they never heard of. My name is Howie Escobar. Oh, jeez. Fucking, I mean, there's no, I was talking to Hot this morning about the same thing. She read it to me, and I said, do you think that can be real? And, I mean, look, we just had a NYCHA situation in New York City where they arrested, I think, like 80 people for uh, taking bribes, taking cash for, you know, basically money that was supposed to be going to low-cost housing. Look, anytime. There's a governmental agency involved with cash. There's going to be uh, some criminality. That's just, that's been going on since the beginning of time. So, I don't know. That is bizarre, though. Can you imagine if they were giving each person 10G? How oh. embarrassing is that for the government, though? I mean, you'd think they would, no wonder they didn't want to publicize that because it's so embarrassing. New York City's broke. There's no money here. Ugh. Shit. 
MTAs put it in a hole. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. According to the news, there's migrants everywhere, but I, I, I have, I've seen maybe three. Really? Watch this shit, and then after the election, it'll just be vapor. You won't see any more of this shit for another three years or so. It'll just go yeah, away. Well, no, it's going to ramp up crazy. But after the election, I'm saying, it's just going to be whoosh, yeah. magically it's gonna ramp out crazy. Yeah. They're going to try to bombard everybody with something's going nuts. And then and then they're gonna uh they're gonna lose their they're just gonna try to scare people from actually going to vote. Think about how long they've done this though. They've done it all, going back to like Jimmy Carter, you know, with the the, the hostages. Yeah. Uh, the, I mean they've they've been and with Reagan coming in office, you know, they've been doing this, building things up right before the election, and then the new guy just solves the problem. Yeah, it's coming, dude. I, I, yeah, I don't try. I don't. I, I'm reading stuff lately. And it's getting more bizarre and bizarre, which tells me it's all bullshit. I just don't believe fucking any. Twitter is so. T Listen, man. Yeah, Twitter's fucked. The National Enquirer has way more validity than Twitter. Way more. The stuff now I people are editing it, so it's so it's. Per yeah, I mean, they. This is what they decide. They can't control it, so they're gonna flood it. Editing what, Sam? What do you mean? So, like, I saw a clip of Fannie Willis, right? <laughs> Yeah. And she's like, well, you know, I just took some of the campaign money. I put a little over here, put some back in my house, you know? So it makes it sound like she's openly admitting that she's, you know, committed campaign fraud. But in reality, she was self-funded. She funded her whole, her whole campaign herself. So that's her money. But they want you to think they got her. They don't have her because the judge is basically a guy that worked for her. And the only way is this white... Republican guy is going to get reelected is if he lets her off. And that dude, it's going to happen. She's going to get off down there. Yeah, you can't. Uh, I mean, dude, Twitter, it, honest, I, I have to say, and I hate saying this, but you could trust much more what you read on Twitter before Elon took over back in the old system of blue yeah, check marks. Well, I hate yeah. to say it, but yeah. the blue check mark is, I mean, you have to ignore the blue check mark now. That means nothing. No, uh, it means nothing. He should have came up with a red check mark, then a blue, like different colored check marks. Because now, dude, I can't tell you how many times I get a pop up on my phone like the Braves just signed Shohei Otani. He actually didn't have a contract with the Dodgers. You won't believe it. ESPN. And then it's got a check mark. And I'm like, what? That doesn't make any sense. And you click on it and it's like uh, ESPN satire, you know, and, and you're like, fuck. Like, and that's what they send push alerts out for the fake news now. It's crazy. It yeah, it's uh, it's out of control, man. We got huge news recent. This news came out in the last five minutes. Natural gas. I don't know what the deal is. It could be Diamondback Energy is cranking after earnings, but natural gas is up huge as far as a commodity right now in the after hours, and that's a good thing. Um, because I've been getting tons of questions. When's this UNG gonna bounce? It looks like it's bouncing right now, man. Up like eight percent. And after hours. And if you own Palo Alto Networks, which is which is a huge tech company, huge, you are fucked. Because that thing just shit the bed and it's down over 14% in after hours right now. That's a big company, Palo Alto. And basically that's gonna be that's gonna be hitting tomorrow morning. So you're gonna see the Nasdaq down again. We took a beat down today. I think we take another beat down tomorrow. It's what we said last week. Things are correcting. Um, bank stocks are up. Oil and energy's up. Technology's going to... And tomorrow is huge because the biggest tech weather on the street right now, NVIDIA, comes out with earnings after hours tomorrow. And that's going to make or break a ton of people because you got a head fake today. Stock opened up down like... 6% today. It went from 740 down to 689 and uh earnings come out tomorrow after the bell. And a lot of people are jumping in. They'll be jumping in tomorrow and I'd be afraid to at this price, especially with these earnings coming out. If it doesn't if they don't crush their number, uh things could get ugly. They could get ugly tomorrow. So it's a good day to lock and load and, and be ready. What's Got your thought, Howie? Do you think people knew ahead of time that the news and were making moves like the the big wigs? Why why was yeah, it? I do, man. I mean, this look, this stock uh opened up today at 720, closed at 690. 
That's a 30 point swing down. I think a lot of there was a lot of profit taken in hedge funds, pension funds. You know, the stock has gone in three months. It's gone from 490 all the way up to 690, 200 points. So I do think this thing will drop back in the low 600s. Uh, the NASDAQ will take a beating. SQQQ will go up. UVIX, the volatility index, will go up. Excuse me, go up. And we'll have a chance to make some moves this week. So things are looking good. But, you know, we got to watch NVIDIA tomorrow. That's the kicker. NVIDIA. Right on. All right. That's boy. That's ex that's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, did you see that Remington, this is kind of, uh, you know, and people seem surprised by this. Remington, you know, the gun man maker, uh, their factory's leaving New York. Yeah, that's been a part of New York forever, and they're leaving New York. Uh, the That's going to be devastating for the little town where it is, uh, what, Mohawk Valley, New York's Mohawk oh, Valley. Oh, God, apparently. that sucks. So I grew up driving back and forth, and so many of my buddies <laughs> I went to Cortland State where their parents, uncles, aunts worked in that factory. That factory in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s was huge. If you drive from Albany to Syracuse, uh, the Remington factory's on your left. It's yeah, it's right in Mohawk. Uh, right, right before you get to Herkimer, I believe. Um, but yeah, that's it. It was huge. And you know what's weird? I When I did the show with Sam in Buffalo last summer, I drove back and I saw that thing on the right. And I called one of my buddies. I said, man, it looks dead over there. And he said, yeah, they, they're getting ready to leave. They're getting ready to shut it mm. down. And and they've been there forever. Going to and, Georgia. Of course. Look at the yeah. tax. You don't pay any taxes down there. I mean, it's like where Sam grew up, man. That fucking Cortland used to have tons of factories. Smith Corona. Yeah, all these big, big, you know, and they hired and and paid good wages. And I think Smith Corona moved to Mexico. Um, yeah, well, Smith Corona is dead they because make typewriters anymore. nobody makes typewriters, <laughs> and they could have saved themselves. They could have saved themselves because yeah. Microsoft wanted to buy them. Oh so, wow, Smith Corona really keyboards. Huh. Interesting. That, that was a fuck up. <laughs> Oh. What a mistake. Wow. You imagine being an executive for Smith Corona? I like have no clue what the leadership of New York is doing. And I'm going to say this, Howie, and I'm sorry, but I have zero sympathy for people who keep voting for the same people. You had a chance to get rid of that Skeletor as your governor, mm -hmm. and you yeah. still voted it, voted it well, in. She, <laughs> look, I will say this. I don't like her. Um, there's nothing to like about her. You, there's my, nothing to my, go. She's doing a decent job. Her, the chick from Detroit, uh, Michigan, they're they're awful people. But what you have is a bunch of people that are too afraid not to vote for Democrats because the theory of something is worse. And I'm not even saying you got to vote for Republicans. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying stop voting for the people that have annihilated your way of living. The same families. Yeah, it's all, she, I, all these people who have been in politics, their co entire career is politics. My my girl's a Democrat, and, and she's not voting for her. She can't stand her. Um, and I think that's the case. The problem with New York State is this. When you have 50 times the rest of the state living in, living in a five-mile radius, which is New York City, that's where all the votes go to. I mean... Who's the last governor we had in New York State? Was it Pataki, Republican? Yeah, yeah, Pataki was Republican. So I will say this. It would not surprise me this year. I mean, I'm sorry, when is the election? Next year. If she gets ousted because she has a horrible reputation all over the state, even in the city. I, mean, I know Democrats that won't vote for her. Um, so, and she's a nightmare. That shit she said the other day about Canada, it was like, sweetie, you did not read the room. And not only that, you just bombed. Uh, and she lost a lot of votes by just saying that. You know, I live in what Buffalo. She, say? she said, I live in Buffalo and we live next to Canada. And if they ever came down here and tried to attack Buffalo, there'd be no more Canada left. Making an analogy about the Gaza Strip. Uh, that's what she said.
Oh. What? <laughs> what? So she, she pissed a lot of Democrats off um, with that fucking stupid statement. So, you know, and I don't, I'll tell you one thing. People don't, they don't know politics. You can't blame our mayor. You can't blame our mayor for anything. Because look, this guy's tried to get uh, conservative policies passed in New York City. He's tried. I mean, that's when those cops got jumped, he went down to uh, the city council and said, hell no, you got to start, fuck this bail reform. You got to keep these people in jail. And you know what they did? They voted him down. The city council voted him down. So he doesn't, you know, as a mayor, you don't have that much power. Uh, so I don't really blame him. He has tried to get some some g- decent conservative policies passed, and and he has. He's had. It's no crazy luck. to me that city council keeping violent people in jail is considered a conservative idea. Hey, I, I know. And, and this is where yeah. it gets to, dude. This is where it gets to. Where it, when when these rich people that keep voting for progressive policies get mugged or murdered, they just chuck it up to bad luck. Wrong place, wrong time. That's what they chuck it up to. Not well, the result of their of their voting. But and most it, people, Sam, most people that are wealthy, and I'll go out and say 75% or higher, they're not voting Democrat. And it's not because of crime. It's because of this. I, right. mean, I get that. I get that. Funny. But there's a reason why you guys just keep voting in Democrats. You say well, you guys, we do it out here too. Shit. No, I'm with you. Fuck, Sam, you live in LA for Christ's yeah. sake. No, 100. percent 100 percent New York. 100 um, percent. LA, San Francisco, Philadelphia, Chicago. It's cities. There's not one major city in this country that doesn't vote Democrat. There's not one. You know, even in the South. Know, if you look back the past 50 years, it does go in waves. It goes in waves, man. It always well, has. We'll we see. had a really we had a rough time in the 70s. In 80s here, rough time in New York City. And then Giuliani got, uh, that's before he lost his mind. He he got elected, you know, straightened things up. Things went too far this way. And then they, you know, we got uh, de Blasio and that crew. So, or Bloomberg. Bloomberg actually wasn't bad. Um, but it goes in swings, you know. A few more people get thrown in the subways. We get some more kidnappings. So they'll go <laughs> back. We'll get a Republican in. It's going to happen. Yeah, what was that guy's name that shot up those people on the subway in the, what the eighties? Uh, yeah, I remember that guy. That did yeah, yeah, Bernard Gats. Yeah, oh, what Bernard a, Gats. People loved him. Yeah, I know. That's why I, we need a hero. You know, we need somebody. Four or five to, guys were running away. He just blasted just him in the back. Kill him. Yeah, what a guy. <laughs> yeah, and he uh, got away with it. I mean, he did, I think he yeah. did a lot of time, but but not not what you should for shooting people in the back. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be like three four hundred jobs in a town of like seven thousand. It's it, it's 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 going to cost them a million dollars in revenue a year. And you know, it, I'm reading the quotes here. They're all like, "We lost our heart and soul." This so this town yeah. is, this is like the town I grew up in. All it used to be filled with factories, you know, and everybody made a good living, and it was all devastated by George, Bill Clinton. You know, the free trade. Quote, That's unquote. Herker. I think it's Herkimer is where uh, Remington is in. I thought it was. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know the. Uh, it says the village of Ilian. Is that Ilian. Like something? Yeah, yeah. Ilian. It's right now. You got Herkimer, Ilian, and uh, Mohawk. Those three, and it's right on the the uh, Mohawk River, of course, which is the Erie Canal, basically. Um, and uh, yeah, look. I mean, they're losing. You know how long that fucking that factory's been there for two hundred years? Yeah, yeah, I'm seeing they got old photos of you know what what is this nineteen seventeen? People are dude, making that town is up. dead, dude. Two hundred that makes me years. so sad. Yeah, it's dev- it's devastating oh, to a small it, town. That was Just already done. devastated. It was already <laughs> devastated right before you get to Utica. It was already in rough shape, and now these guys are moving to uh, Georgia. Now, basically, I don't know what, I have no idea what's going to be there. Nothing. Hey, guys, I want to tell you about our friend James McMahon and Copy My Crypto. Has it pissed you off to watch crypto fly up in prices for over a decade and you've still done nothing about it? It makes sense. It totally makes sense. Crypto is complicated and it's really boring. Well, we're here. Well, here's the good news, okay? You don't need to know a thing about crypto to make the money so many have. The Copy My 
MyCrypto.com membership site shows you the exact cryptos that YouTuber James McMahon personally owns, which means you just copy him. It's like having a big brother who knows what he's doing. You don't need to know a thing about crypto or how to invest as you simply copy along. So let me tell you about James. He runs the Crypto with James YouTube channel, which has over 54,000 subscribers. In the summer of 2020, he told his viewers to buy 26 cryptos. Had you put $100 into each one, it went on to be worth over $123,000. Of the 26 cryptos, his top pick of the year, the one he singled out called Phantom, went up 692 times from when he said, that one alone has retired a number of people, including guys in their 20s and 30s. Remember, this is public knowledge. You can go to YouTube and verify for yourself. So if you'd like to join the 2,800 members who copy James, then pause what you're doing and head over to copymycrypto.com slash Sam. That's copymycrypto.com forward slash Sam, S-A-M. You'll not only find the proof of everything I've said, but my viewers get full access for just $1. Yes, you've missed out on Bitcoin, but there's over 2 million other cryptos. Do you really think you've missed out on all of them? Guys, don't waste any more time. Go to the site and read it. Once again, that's copymycrypto.com slash Sam. It's ended money worries for so many. It may just do the same for you. Well, and if you, I mean, and it's part of this pattern. I, I see stories every day about people who are just moving south. Uh, this this is Fox Business. It says Florida, Texas rank as top destinations for relocating businesses. Texas is attracting more businesses than any other state. Uh, the exodus that? from the exodus from high tax states accelerated over the past decade as Republican controlled states saw an influx of businesses. Texas and Florida led the nation between 2010 and 2019 in attracting bu businesses uh, from other parts of the country. More than 25,000 establishments relocated to Texas during that period, bringing more than 281,000 jobs with them. Crazy. And they're leaving for one reason. They said it. Right, Mike? said they said we're moving to Georgia because. It's a business-friendly state, less taxes, and it's a firearms-friendly state. Yeah, I mean. And you got, uh, it says Florida was the top destination for businesses looking to relocate, followed by Texas, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Arizona. Yeah, you know, it, things go in waves, and, you know, what New York State needs is you need, you need a governor, you need uh you need some of these senators, some of these representatives, more importantly, to come in here and say, look, we, ha we have to lower taxes. We, we need to give incentives to some of these companies to move here. They haven't done shit, yeah. man. Yeah. And dude, uh, you know, they can afford it because they're giving out $10,000 on debit cards to just any just passers by. They, they could afford to cut the taxes a little bit, I would think. Jesus. After we yeah. hang up, I fucking I'm walking up there and I'm going to try to get one. I'm, I'm <laughs> you should do that. Howie. You, you gotta you gotta muss your hair up a little bit though. There's no way somebody with that hair is getting ten grand. You're gonna have to rough your hair up a little bit, Howie. I'll just bring one of my boys at the bodega right down the fucking downstairs with me, man. I mean, it's just like you do the speaking, you tell him I need a card, and they're gonna be like, "Why is he so white?" <laughs> He's, yeah, one, he's a he's a Louis C.K. Mexican. That's what he'll, that's what your friend should tell. That's crazy. I I mean I don't know if it's true. Well, I I got to do a little bit of investigating on that to see how true it is. The Post is reporting it, dude. Like it's a thing. Yeah, yeah. The Post. I've lost total, especially after that. I article. mean, yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, I will say this: it's some it's some wild shit in New York City because, like my buddy says, and I know he's right. When you go to the Roosevelt Hotel, which is one of the oldest, nicest hotels in New York City, and they basically shut it down, and now it's it's for migrants. When you go in there, you can't tell the difference. You look to the left, it's a fully stocked bar, bartenders working. <laughs> they're union bartenders, they're getting paid union wages. The people <laughs> that change the beds at night, they're they're union workers. They're getting paid union really? wages. Yeah. That's fascinating. Nothing happened with that. It's uh look, man, this is one corrupt city. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know how it saves itself. I mean, uh, look, I don't know. I'm look, it, 
nothing's New York's not going anywhere. At some point, they'll figure it out, and it'll swing the other direction for 10, 20 years. Then it'll swing back. Um, we need a few more people just to eat a one or a two train tonight. Uh, maybe a few more cops get jumped. You don't want to see it, but, you know, uh, it's it's kind of the life cycle. You know, maybe a good fire or two. Um, and, 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 yeah, and then it'll uh, we'll go back the other way. We'll uh, change some policies, but I, I feel bad for this mayor in a way because he has tossed some new bills to this council and they've shot him down, man. And it's like, come on. I'll tell you where it'll happen, Sam. This is where it'll happen. When they, in a year from now, look at the new uh, police class coming in, the new kids coming in, and they don't have enough bodies, then it'll change. Then it'll change because that is happening. You're getting a lot of these guys retiring and they're not getting replaced. So, in what? As, as far as police, police go, uh, there's yeah. just not numbers. They're recruiting like crazy right now. Um, and people don't want to be cops because nobody's backing them, you know? Yeah, 100%. You can't, you can't do this, you can't do that, but you can get jumped. I mean, you know, back in the 70s, 80s, if you got jumped, you got shot, you know? And that's, you know, you know I don't know. I don't have the answer. But I walk around New York, and I can't – maybe it's because I don't remember because I've had COVID so many times, but I don't know. It looks the same as it did when I moved here. I can't tell the difference. Uh, and it's probably a little bit of everything. There's some chaos happening, but for the most part – it's like when I went to – uh when I went to Portland and they were like, oh, dude, there's rioting everywhere. I'm like, where is it? And everyone's like, we haven't seen it. Yeah. And so I'm like, let's go find it. And we went to look for it. And there was like 50 people in a, 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 a park, uh, messing with some like, uh, uh, some like army guys in a, in a, in a, in a, in a like some kind of city office. Like they were just like, what are those called when you're like you're you're part of like the you're in the military but you have only do it like once a weekend? National uh, Guard. A, yeah, it was yeah, some National, National Guard, Guard guys. And that's it. Reservists. Uh, it's totally it's totally made up. It's all made up. I, I mean, these caravans of people are coming. I I wonder how more real that is. Yeah, I mean, you see the videos of it, but God, I, just put them in Wyoming. I was watching the video in Wyoming. There's so much open space in Wyoming. It's good land. You can farm there. Just send them all up to Wyoming. Give them some shovels and some hammers and stuff and let them build houses. They'll be fine. Uh, big news today. Did you see Walmart is buying Vizio for $2.3 billion? Yeah. Huge news. And you know what? The Here's the thing. This is dystopian as hell. They say they want it. And this is the quote from uh, the executive vice president and chief revenue officer at Walmart U.S., uh, we believe Vizio's customer-centric operating system provides great viewing experiences at an attractive price point. You know what that means? They're going to put ads on the TVs in the operating. They want to put Walmart ads in the TVs. And I bet what you're going to see is they're going to offer a cheaper TV if you let them play ads for you in the operating system. That's We've seen that business model a few times with TVs. But that's the main reason they want that, Vizio. Wait, oh, explain how that would play. Well, it, 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 have you ever had a TV that has its own like built-in like streaming setup, kind of like Apple TV built into yeah, the TV? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just look in the top corner, and it would be like the latest Walmart ad, you know, like the circular or whatever. Like, and they would they'd have all your data because you've consented to it when you were setting up the TV. They would know what you look at, uh, you know, and and that would just get plugged right sent right up there. And you would, it, when you run out of toilet paper, it'd be like Amazon. This is them competing with Amazon by having a device that's right in your house spying on you all the time uh it's a huge move by walmart really smart because it's a it's a brand that people trust people trust vizio people like vizio they make good tvs uh big move for walmart i'm gonna here. tell you something that's very odd that's happening right now as we speak this is why oh shit dude something is up so this palo alto north networks which is a big big tech tech company came out and they were down 12 percent. now they're down 20 percent which means you have institutional selling. NVIDIA, when we started this show, closed at two, $694. You know, it was down 31 points today. It's down 12 points in after hours to 682.80. 80 
and earnings don't come out until tomorrow afternoon. So this tells me somebody knows something, and it's not positive news. We may see a fucking bloodbath tomorrow, but natural gas is cranking, so that's good. <laughs> but we may see a bloodbath tomorrow. This could be, tomorrow could be the little consolidation we've been waiting for here. You um, think so, huh? I, I'm seeing stuff right now uh, on these after hours. Tesla down seven points, 193. Yeah, NVIDIA is it. Fuck, NVIDIA 684, it closed at 692. Damn. Disney down nine points to 102. That thing was cranking. So tomorrow could be, look, that's good for us. We own SQQQQ and we own you, Vix, and I've been waiting to get out of this thing. But tomorrow could be the day. Bitcoin's Teledyne. still at 52. It's not getting hurt by this. It doesn't look like that's good. Teladoc is down four points in after hours, down to 17 and change. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of selling off tonight. And that's usually institutions that are doing it. Um, you know, but you mentioned Walmart. Shit, Walmart had an all-time high today. Home Depot, all-time high. Costco, all-time high. The big retailers have been cranking, so they'll probably sell off too. I want to see, what did uh, what did Vizio do? God damn it, uh, oh yeah, Vizio's up sixteen percent today with the Walmart news. Yeah, with that buyout. Yeah, wow, they're up forty-one percent on the week. That's crazy. Holy that shit. just tells you that somebody ratted their mouth off and they shouldn't have about this yeah. buyout. Look at it, dude. Look at it. Well, the way it goes up. What is it? How many days ago is this? Uh, this is on the thirteenth of February. It jumps from uh, uh what is it? Seven bucks to. Eleven dollars, <laughs> something yeah. like that. Wait, hold on. I, I'm trying to see here. It's it's this app I have is the worst I'm on the phone, that. but it takes a huge jump. About what it, what is that on the 13th? Yeah, on February 13th, a huge jump, and then another big jump today when you know retail investors heard. But yeah, it, that's so funny. Uh, yeah. so we gotta get we gotta get some insider inside knowledge. Damn it. Anybody have inside knowledge, please tell me in my DMs. Yeah. Yeah. That's or Telegram. Not... No, Telegram. We need something encrypted. Telegram me. Don't tell me. Tell me in my, in my, my DMs what your Telegram is, and then we'll get, we'll well, get some you inside. Can look around and, and you, can, you can read between the lines a lot of times on news. Like right now, I'm looking at all this news on NVIDIA, and I would think some people will be buying tomorrow because it's down a little bit, but that could be a pump fake. That could be – if you don't see large – block trading on nvidia tomorrow that means that somebody inside knows that they're not going to crush like people expect them to and i mean this thing in one day could be down to 600 points just gone up too much but damn that's in something's going on with natural gas right now that's freaking me the hell out i don't know what's going on i don't see news but the natural gas is is spiking maybe we got a cold front coming in i don't know yeah, I, I mean, the only weird weather I know of is what's going on in L.A. right now. Uh, yeah, well, what is... Dude, Palo Alto Networks is down 71 points. What is? 71 points. What's Palo it called again? I'll check Twitter. Palo... P-A-N-W. 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 Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see. Almost three months of price action wiped out in one day with P-A-N-W. Uh... Seen if anybody, what did you do? <laughs> Somebody's put up uh, Godfather. Look how they massacred my boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's um, bloodbath, and that's what I've been looking at forever. I just don't see anybody with with uh, an, an idea of why. Look at UNG Johnny and tell me why the hell is that thing up seven uh, percent after hours? Oh, do they have earnings out? P A N W. No, no. Oh, P A N W. This, this guy says P A N W waiting for earnings, and it's a guy. Oh no, like they came out. They came out. They weren't good. Okay. Why it's tanking? Yeah, they came out and shit the bed all over future everything. So then you got crowd strikes down. Um, damn, natural. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm looking at their earnings snapshot here. Yeah, tomorrow's gonna be. Bloody, and that's what we want. We want that because that's uh, that's opportunity. You know, uh, last week we're talking about Uber, and I'm, you know, I'm like, yeah, I like to buy it under seventy. What's it do? It goes right to eighty. Um, 
Uber came back finally today. It was down a buck eighty one. Uh, you know, I, that's what I've been saying on the show when it was at thirty five bucks. Now it's at seventy six. That's probably a three hundred dollar stock in four or five years, maybe less. But what are you? No. What, what? What? How? At some point, are, is this a value? This PANW? Like, what are we looking at here? Or is this I just mean, like a falling knife kind of situation? Oh, I mean, right now we got to see what happens in the morning. But yeah, this this could be an opportunity. It's a good company. Um, they just came out with all kinds of negative news. Shit. Fascinating. I love it when uh, shit happens while we're recording. Twenty percent. Twenty percent. There, Kathy Wood going going in big on Bitcoin. That makes me nervous about Bitcoin, as you know, because I'm a big <laughs> kiss of death. I know it's just really scary. She's talking. I'm, I'm talking about big numbers, like big, big numbers. What is? Uh, they're looking at her asset allocation. Nineteen point four percent Bitcoin. That is, uh, that is so beyond stupid. I mean, uh, how that lady has a job with? I mean, it's just she's insane. Wait, she's got a lot of gold too. What? What is this? At a high level, Wood sees Bitcoin as an important component of por portfolio structure in order to mitigate risk. However, the more important detail is how much weigh weighting Bitcoin should. Gold, 40% gold, equities, 30%, 19% Bitcoin, 9% commodities, and then bonds like nothing. Yeah, That's which, according to the ARK Invest Big Ideas Report 2024. Yeah, she's, uh, I don't know how she's surviving. I just don't because, you know, institutions, big people, they don't have money with her. She's nuts. Maybe, she, she, maybe these are what she's suggesting for for investors because that can't be what they hold. That doesn't make any sense for. She doesn't. No, I mean, in her, for, no, she doesn't hold gold in her funds. No, that can't. Let me see. Okay, let me see. One of the most uh, followed investors on Wall Street is Ark Invest Chief Executive uh, Officer Kathy Wood. Wood has earned a reputation. Blah blah blah. Uh, from time to time, Ark Invest releases research to the public, providing investors with a glimpse of the data and work behind Wood's forecast. Ooh, fancy. Uh, given her high interest in technology, it's probably not a surprise to learn that Wood is a proponent of Bitcoin. While she is not only an institutional investor, have while she is not the only institutional investor heavily supporting Bitcoin, she is certainly one of the most bullish. Two weeks ago, ARK Invest released its annual Big Ideas Report for 2024. One of the standouts from the presentation was Wood's latest outlook on Bitcoin. Although she does not specify an exact timeline, Wood is calling for Bitcoin to reach a price of $2.3 million per token. Are you hearing that, Sam? Kathy Wood thinks Bitcoin is going to hit $2.3 million per token. This represents more than 4,000% upside to Bitcoin's current price. Price. So it is now the time to pour money into Bitcoin. Let's dig into Wood's case and assess whether Bitcoin is right for you. And this is a breakdown on her latest I take. I can't take this right now, dude. 5.3 <laughs> million. So fucked. Bitcoin is unlike other asset classes as stock, uh, stocks and bonds. Uh, generally speaking, during times of economic instability, investors may consider alternatives I am so such as real estate, art, or commodities such as gold. Although crypto is a fairly nascent asset, Bitcoin in particular car carries some overlapping features with gold because both are considered oh my gosh, scarce. Oh, 52 to 52,000. For oh. this reason, some of you... I, I'm trying to figure out what we're looking at here. This table illustrates Wood's proposed pro portfolio allocation. 40% gold, 30% equities, 19% Bitcoin. So I guess this is what she's recommending for... I, I Why would you have 40% gold? That doesn't make any sense, right? No, she doesn't. She doesn't. No, but why would any... I mean, why would she recommend that to any? I just don't I, understand. If, if you went for something like 40% gold, you would be thinking that the markets are it's going... To end of days, right? Yeah. Over the next week or two. I mean, I don't, you know. I mean, hey, the 2024 portfolio on Cash Daddies, we we went in 7% Bitcoin at 42,000. So That's nice. That's nice. I liked it. I said buy 7, 5 to 10%. Make sure you have Bitcoin. You know, not a lot, but hell, it's up. It's up 20, 25%. Um, and I like it, but anyone to go out and put a, let, anyone to put a, a number of say a hundred thousand on Bitcoin, you're out of your mind. You don't 2. know. Two point three million is what she's saying. She's just she's you know she hears voices. She probably needs heavy heavy doses of medication. 
Which there's uh, no time. So, to be fair, she doesn't put a timeline on it. So who who gives a shit? You're making predictions, you know, with no timeline. I mean, great. Oh, yeah. it's, like, it's like the whole, you know, Hillary's going to get arrested thing. Like when, you know, oh, you know, sometime before she dies. Well, OK. Like, I mean, look, man, Uber's going to be at 100,000 in probably the year. Th what? 30,000. 20. <laughs> Good job, Thank Howie. You. You, you're learning how to make predictions in the Kathy Wood style. Good yeah. job. You can do that. I mean, that's uh look at AMC. I'm looking at AMC. When we started this show, Sam, AMC was at like a hundred, and all those guys were like, Yep, short squeeze, short squeeze. that thing's at four bucks. It's oh, at four is it four dollars, really? Oh my god. Four dollars. Well, what about is are did they and they brought ape coin back in under that ticker, right? So that ape thing is not or that ape, yeah, it's gone. Remember when they had that that ape uh split and then i i think they reversed that actually they walked that back for some reason i mean uh, yeah 463 damn that sucks because i really like AIM. i mean they're the best theater chain i mean yeah that doesn't look good it looks like at some point i don't know how they're gonna stay open i don't know dude don't do know. you know what they're, they're high in 21 was uh 300 i'm sorry 461 is that right probably they, they were and then Oh my God! Support out. Imagine you're an employee and you you get paid in options at that company and oh you your entire look, your entire man. fortune evaporate. Look, GME, G GME was at uh, twenty five bucks. This was over a year ago, and I told you, I, I no, actually, it was higher. It was uh, shit. It was it yeah forty. It was at forty dollars. And I was at this get together, a buddy of mine's birthday, and and this kid was like, "If you don't put all your money in GME, you don't know what you're doing." And this, he was like a thirty year old uh, cop, and I'm like, "Okay, you're, you're oh. I got thirty year old cop telling me about investing. All right, this is interesting." He <laughs> said, "He goes, put all your money in GME. It's just if you don't, you know, you're gonna." And I bet I said, "Look, I know you might listen to. I don't even know where you get this news from, but." If you've ever not listened to anything in your life, just listen to what I'm telling you ah. and sell out of all of it and fucking just put your money in cat money market and just sit back. You'll love me in two years. It was at 40. It's at $13 and 49 cents today. I mean, which honestly I'm surprised it's that high. Oh, it's going to break 10. It's going to three or four. There's no doubt. This stock is the biggest scam out there. That's still up from where it was before the pump. I mean, that's, wasn't it like way down around a dollar or something before they started pumping it? Yeah, it was uh, 2020. Yeah, it was at like a buck fifty two dollars. Maybe the company's actually done something with all the money. Who's this again? GameStop. Oh, damn. it went to eighty. It went to a dollar fifty to eighty. I mean, they made a movie on it. Um, it it's was a pretty good movie too. It's not it bad. Was, it was falsely pumped. If they squeezed the shit out of it, you know, the apes. God bless them. Good for them. But guess the apes are dead. And uh, those days of pumping, it's the never going to happen again, unfortunately. I mean, find you got to find something new. Why well, don't I mean, it, it is possible to for do you think uh, do you think that they put in restrictions so that retail investors couldn't do that again? Or do you think it's still possible? Oh, no, retail investors could if they had the money. They could. You just have to find some low, low, uh, low activity stock, right? Like with not a lot of volume, right? So yeah, that you could yeah, move yeah. it. Find a, and I've seen, you know, shit. They got, you know, uh, syndicates of under underground underground crime that does it. They they find a stock and they get thirty guys on a telephone that call all over the country and they tell people pick up five thousand, pick up ten thousand. Really? They falsely pump it. Syndicates, yeah. Really. Shit, they, New York was famous for it. Watch the watch the boiler room. And, oh yeah, the boiler room. That's a great movie. But at some point, it, it just becomes a Ponzi scheme, though, right? When you're pumping them because whoever's the last in is is fucked, right? Exactly what it is. Yeah. It's, it's 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 like a hex. It's the same thing. <laughs> like yeah. no man, I put all my money in the hex. There was dudes that w would that, that we had on the show that that literally put enormous amounts of money thinking that that stuff. That in five or ten years, what did they used to call it? Staking. Yeah, staking. Yeah, yeah. That's Taking. they still call it that. Yeah. 
The only thing you're going to stake is a stake up your ass when when that thing. I mean, you're done. That hex is never coming back. It's don't don't even, put a stake up your ass, people. Don't do that. Even if uh, if you see Bitcoin, Bitcoin goes up, uh, Ethereum goes up, hex goes down. That thing's trading at point zero zero nine, you know, not even close to a penny anymore. Continuing so, on uh, Sam's prediction that the airlines are going to tank because that's what the powers that be want. A, a Boston flight to San Francisco was, this was all over the news, was forced to divert to Denver after the plane's wing came apart in midair. Uh, just another, the latest in these series of stories about nightmare, yeah, flying yeah. nightmares. Uh, hey, I mean, hey. Sam's, Sam's right to a point. I mean, you look at, you look at like, uh, Let's see here. American Airlines uh, a year ago was trading at 18 down to 14.69. Looks like it could still go lower. Um, Delta. Uh, Delta is at 40 bucks right now. Uh, a year ago was at 47, 48. I mean, I, I don't I've never liked the airlines. I There's never been an airline that hasn't gone bankrupt. So they all have. They all do eventually. Yeah, and the, I mean, the, the tail from inside the plane, uh, people are looking, like, they hear this weird sound, and they look out and see that just big chunks of the wing are missing. They're not sure what the cause was. Big news, I know this is a pet topic for us, but uh, for uh, it looks like Bud Light was dethroned by Corona as the top beer on Super Bowl Sunday. Yes. Uh, in restaurants and bars, etc. Uh, the stats on the beer sales at bars and restaurants during Super Bowl Sunday uh, are reporting that uh let's see that's tap the symbols tap that's molson which is corona yeah what well, hold on uh mm. i'm trying to find the comparative numbers here you know they're both trading at the same price which is kind of wild bud and and molson are trading at the same price it's about identical 62 mm. bud's at 62.85 and uh molson cores is at 62.72 that's wild. About the same. Um, okay, the stats are in on beer sales and restaurants during Super Bowl Sunday. And while sales were up overall, there were clear winners and losers. The latest report from hospitality engagement platform Union found on on-premises sales jumped 16% on game day compared to a typical day. And an increase from 2023 when they only rose 10%. Wow, so people are drinking hard. Uh, Corona, owned by Constellation Brands, was the top-selling beer this year on whole day sales, while Anheuser-Busch's in InBev's Michelob Ultra took the lead during the actual game. Uh, by taking the top spot in sales for the day, Corona dethroned beleaguered AB Brands Bud Light, which was the top seller. The top seller. This is written like gobbledygook on in-premises sales for 2023 Super Bowl, but saw sales plummet 50 percent. We know why. Um, another constellation brand, Modelo Especial, overtook Bud Light as the top-selling beer in the U.S. overall last year. So, and it remains on top. Yeah, Modelo. Modelo's big. That's a big California beer, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they love it out here. Yeah. Um, Any other big news for today? We missed anything? I know Neuralink had a big announcement that the guy can move with the brain implant, can move a mouse with his brain now. Uh, I can move it with my hand, so I'm, I'm cool with just keeping doing it that way. Um, yes. Jeff Bezos is selling huge amounts of Amazon stock, I saw. Yeah, yeah. I don't think that's a big deal. I just think, nah, he's getting, I, I just think he just wants to get out. Yeah, I think he's just done. Bang, watch Black Eyes bang his Latina girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah, a few other little political things, but that's unless you got anything else, Howie. Uh tomorrow's gonna be wild, man. Just looking at all this, it's gonna be wild, wild day tomorrow to see how if this we we may we're headed back down, which is a good thing. It gives us some opportunities. I'm glad. Right on. What are you looking at for these people this week? Well, the big thing is look at Nvidia's earnings tomorrow. Things down to six eighty one in after hours. If that thing gets down to six fifteen. Uh, then everything, then everything's a look. Then you got to look at Amazon. You got to look at the some of these other semiconductors. Um, Uber, let's hope Uber drops some more so people can get in. Um, 
and I think some uh, some of these biotech farmers are, are looking good. So, you know, we just want a nice, wholesome sell-off here. Let's get some of these big institutions just to take some profits and let's go back down as we need. Yes, Queen. All right. That's it for us. Sam, take us take us over to the other Guys, side. Guys, join us right now for the exclusive, the elusive, patreon.com slash cash status. <laughs>